guys, it's Layla. Today we'll speak about pancreatic tumors, specifically about the exocrine ones. So the neoplasms of the pancreas, you've got the exocrine tumors and then you've got the endocrine tumors. So the exocrine pancreas, they are to do with like asinar and duct tissue. Um, the endocrine are with the islets of the Langerhans uh, with the hormones system okay and the exocrine is the pancreatic secretions and uh, the digestive enzymes so the risk factors age if you're like more than 70 75 it is more frequent in men family history it is two to three times higher the risk if a parent or sibling has the disease obviously smoking bad habits like alcohol obesity um, diet which is low in fiber fruits and vegetables uh, you have some uh, oncogenes like k-rats which is the most common one you've got mutations in tumor suppressor genes like p53 p16 brca2 okay specifically about exocrine so uh, by who you have the classification of the primary tumor so benign you have serous cyst adenoma and mucinous cyst adenoma then you can have introductal papillary mucinous adenoma. So the most common one is mucinous cyst adenoma, and these are benign. You go to borderline with um, introductal papillary mucinous tumor with moderate dysplasia or solid pseudopapillary tumor. Um, malignant ones, you have ductal adenocarcinoma, serous or mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma, the malignant form of the benign ones. And then you have intraductal mucinous papillary tumors. Adenocarcinomas are the most common ones and they mainly occur in the head or the incinerate process. You have adenosquamous carcinoma, a variant affecting both the glandular cells and the squamous cells. And then you've got acinar cell carcinoma, which is usually large, like 10 centimeters, and it is not very common. Okay, this is the anatomic structure of the pancreas. It is more common to get tumors in the head and the neck or the incinerate process. And they're usually smaller and resectable. But if you get it in the body and the tail, they're less common and they're less commonly resectable as well. And they usually contain larger tumors. Going on to the clinical features, you're going to have pain in the epigastric region mainly. You can have jaundice. Uh, weight loss, distended gallbladder may be palpable. You can have hyperglycemia with glucosuria, something known as new onset diabetes mellitus, uh, especially in people older than 60. Um, you can have unexplained fever, nausea and vomiting, and acolia, which is known as lack or absence of bile secretion. For diagnosis, you can have CT, which is the current diagnostic method. You can do CT, a laparotomy with biopsy. Uh, for staging, uh, MRI, elevated serum CA1919, which is a tumor biomarker, abdominal ultrasound, uh, lab tests like direct hyperbilirubinemia and elevated alkaline phosphatase levels. The body and tail are usually detected late because uh, they are further away from the gastrointestinal system, so they lack the obstructive symptoms that usually takes uh, people to the doctors. For differential diagnosis, we can have gastric cancer, gallbladder cancer, um, that cancer is in that vicinity, even like extrahepatic bile duct cancers or cleft kidney tumors. You can also have pseudotumorous form of chronic pancreatitis. For the staging, it's the same as the other cancers like primary tumor, you know, TNM, regional lymph node, and distant metastasis. So for primary tumor, you need to remember that for T1, it is less than two centimeters in diameter, limited to the pancreas. For T2, limited, but more than two, uh, two to four to be more accurate. T3 is extends beyond the pancreas, but does not involve the sea leg axis or the superior mesenteric artery. And T4, it, it does involve um, those bits. The regional lymph node is the same, so N0 would be no lymph node involvement and N1 would be an involvement. Distant metastasis, it's the same as well. M0 would be no distant metastasis and M1 would be 
there is a distal metastasis. To be more accurate, there is M1A, M1B, and M1C. So M1A is when it is confined to the liver, the metastasis. M1B is in at least one extrahepatic site. And M1C is both hepatic and extrahepatic metastasis. Okay, for treatment with curative intent, you can do surgical resection. There are different types. You can do pancreatic oogeogenectomy or Whipple's operation, which is pancreatic oogeogenostomy, and pancreatectomy, which can be either subtotal or total. You usually adopt this pancreatectomy for resection of the body and the tail. For head, you can do the A and B. Chemotherapy and radiation is also helpful. You can also do ablation um, for locally advanced unresectable disease. Treatment with palliative intent is when there is no cure. So you try to deal with the symptoms. So pain, you will take oral narcotics. For jaundice, you can do an endoscopic biliary stent. For duodenal obstruction, you will do an endoscopic metallic duodenal stent or you can even do surgical bypass. Complications of cancer is usually sepsis and hemorrhage or cardiovascular diseases as well. Postoperative, you can have delayed gastric emptying, uh, pancreatic fistula and hemorrhage, secondary to gastric involvement and portal hypertension. Okay, that's it for this video, guys. Take care. Bye.